welcome to this Zentangle Quickie. My name is Heather Hartwick Ladden. I'm a certified Zentangle teacher. And today we're going to take a look at this tangle called Shifer from Simone Bischoff. Hope I pronounced that right. Okay, this is, it's a neat tangle. I like that it's geometric. Also has a number of options for, for decorating, if you will. Um, it, yeah, just neat. All right, so I decided to put a little border around the edge of my bijou tile here. And it starts off with a series of V's or two straight lines put together. And of course you decide how big, how small, right? All right, so I'm just gonna start in this corner. I'm trying to make mine a little bit larger than I would normally think to do them. And let's see if I can make an even number. Oh, look at that. Okay, all the way across. So in the section you're filling, start off with, you know, a line of V's like this. And then, you know what I should do? Yeah, I'll do it next time. Um, then we're going to put uh, a line across using the halibau technique, which is to draw under. And if you watch, when I get, I'm not going to draw over. When I get to this line, I'll pick up my pen, travel it over, and continue. And thinking in one straight line here, so that way it's at least close to being even, okay? Then, guess what? <laughs> We're going to rinse and repeat. So same thing. Now this is where it could get a little tricky, and that is because you want to kind of have the same distance, the same size as much as you can. One way I found to do that is to, you know, find this line. Okay, I'm going to start this here right where that peak is and then come down and meet kind of in the middle. I actually lucked out more than once playing with this and getting, you know, the same number of triangles across the page and, you know, had it look somewhat uniform. And then you know, same thing. We're going to just draw this straight-ish <laughs> line across the bottom and so just you know doing the same thing and repeating also helps if i'm looking at it more straight on just a little bit and then you just like i said filling up your entire space as many as you can or as many as will fit i should say not it's not necessarily as many as you can and then if you get to like this where i'm not going to have enough room to to finish it so I just try to keep that same angle in mind. I like to do this on a lot of tangles where, you know, if you've attended any of my classes or um, even I think on some of these where, oh, this one's going to be really big, but okay. Um, where I'll do like the curvy border just because I find it a fun challenge to do just this where, you know, when you come to the end of the, the section you're tangling in, it's fun to do this where you just you stop and so it looks like it's tucked underneath you know that border all right so there we have it and then then it's a matter of having having some fun with uh either decorating or shading if you look at the step outs and uh in the description section is where those are at uh, oops i also have a link to uh, Simone's blog where this is at so that way you can see there's she has some other variations I'm just going to do this um, one thing it looked like on most of her variations or actually she did have it actually as a last step to fill this in you know what let's I didn't do that on on my step out actually what I did was I did shading on those but you know let's let's uh, do what she wants on here I didn't do that and that way you, we can you know we can kind of see it you can also just you know put in straight lines actually I think any of it works because you know this this is this is kind of the background of all those and and also I say it also <laughs> fixes a couple little things that I, I didn't want you know Aaron, here's a thought we can do a couple things And I like to use this uh, graphic one pen because obviously it's it's wider 
it's a little bit it's a softer tip versus um, the the size you know the bigger sizes because there's a I was using an 01 for most of this they have the they go all the way up to a, a 12 but that's like this it's the same this is just a little bit different and it's nice for for filling in and I probably won't make you suffer through all of this but you know what actually here what I'm gonna do is we'll alternate some some ideas but also make it look nice at the same time <laughs> all right so actually yeah let me do this I'm gonna I'm gonna hit pause and so if you are tangling with me you hit pause as well and then I will be back in a couple minutes I'm going to just so you know I'm going to do alternate I'm gonna do I've done this row I'm gonna do this row and I'll leave the other two for something else and we'll be back to show you more okay there we have it so as I mentioned I alternated those two and then because another uh, thing that I liked that she did was just doing some straight lines and it has a neat effect actually I'm gonna flip it upside down because I'm gonna aura this line here so we'll just start right here and I'm going to use a kind of a light touch because, well, you could do this two ways. You could have it be do this light touch like this because what's nice about doing it this way is, you know, if, if it's a little bit crooked or something, because I'm just kind of not quite tickling the page, but sort of, or the paper, but sort of. So there's the natural bumps that are in the, in the tile that it's kind of, catching and making it look like a little bit of texture in there as well as a straight line and so the reason so like here's here's what I'm doing now or you could push down have a deliberate straight line like that that's one of those up to you I think it makes a neat contrast and is almost almost like you know shading it's just a little lighter than having the solid you know color background And like I said, if your lines aren't even, it doesn't matter as much when we're doing it light hand, light handed like this. All right, and then we'll get this bottom one. Uh, something I wanted to mention on the shading things in solid is also a nice time for course correction if need be. Um, oh, I had a little, little, you know, something over here in this corner, and I was like, oh yes, let's fill in, starting there. And uh, so that's always a nice thing. Uh, if you have, if you notice that something that you just don't like, then it's like, okay, so which direction do I need to fill in, so that way I can correct that that uh, thing that I don't really care for. And also, you know, so doing the lines, this one going this direction, we're not um, disguising anything. But I know a lot of times using straight lines, you can uh, disguise grid lines say so if, you know if we had grid lines we wanted to hide this is one way to do it actually I was almost thinking it might look neat doing straight you know straight lines but having them like start in the middle and then have them uh, you know going to either side so it would look like a damn that that could be another neat thing you could do also in um, oh you know let me do that alternately this way uh, another variation which again, you know, it's up to your imagination. You don't, you don't have to follow the, um, you don't have to follow what is exactly on, you know, somebody said, well, this is up to your imagination. But I did kind of like this one. And well, I'll just go ahead and use, I was thinking I could use a thicker pen. You know, it's kind of fun to, to flip up the sizes of pens I'm finding. But let's just do this where I'm, so we're going to aura the V, aura the V again. And you could do it as many times as you want. Let's just, I'm just, I'm just going to stick with those two because that kind of looks nice. You could even, you know, color in one. You could color, you know, just to make it alternating colors. Or if fill in doesn't have to doesn't have to be color. I just I choose to do just stick with the black and white because that's traditional Zentangle, and I don't want to complicate things with colors. If you know if you want to add in a color, that is up to you. I'll be able to do another series where we're doing, uh, you know, stuff with, with, with color. Or actually, I want to do one on uh, with the other types of tiles. So, 
at some point, just outside of regular classes, be looking for that. But anyway, so there we have it. And like I said, really, really neat tangle. And, you know, could add, if you wanted to, some, some shading on either side of those. Well, let's see, as I said it. Um, let's see what I have left on my tortillon. But let's just add a little bit. Now, I'm not going to go all the way down to this point, I don't think, although I could. But I'm just going to stick with just inside of here. What I did on the first box of my step out was to, um, and sometimes when I scan it to put it in, it doesn't give it any kind of justice, but I, uh, this is how I did all the shading on the one, because I thought, well, that will look neat, and it does look really neat, and it just depends on what kind of look you want to have. Okay, and then with the I'm just kind of scooting it straight up because this is a, this is kind of a fat uh, it's a tortillon that is getting close to its time. I think I'm gonna try to push that out, and we'll see what happens. Sometimes you can get a little bit more life out of these with you know just poking out the tip a little bit. Although the end of mine is pretty crunched in, so I don't know if I can even get anything in there. see that's neat it adds some extra dimension you know and if I went ahead and did which why not you've seen it what that looks like that way let's just continue and I'm just like I said taking the remainder here then it totally yeah overlaps you know onto that the next uh, the next row so that's some fun you could do and even you know even here so if we want to continue that because these are you can't shade on the with the black, but we can add just at the end there, as if, and then we have all of them overlapping. So that at least is consistent. So really neat tangle, lots of fun to be had with it. A nice fill in, and I like to, especially you know having uh, the option to fill in the other section. I just, I find it nice to have that kind of a contrast in, uh, in tangles. So, uh, so anyway, super neat. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, um, you know, like, share, subscribe, all of that. I appreciate, uh, you know, any, any and all of, of those, uh, just to help, uh, you know, share the fun of Zentangle with, with other people. And, uh, also, remember the description section below the step out links, ways to connect with me if you would like to. I do classes every week uh, on, on Thursdays, primarily, and that's a free one. I have some paid, um, but they're mostly free uh, with, you know, and, and really uh, what's helping the, the free classes are the subscriptions, as well as uh, I have a, a Tangle Addicts Club that you can get information for on my website and, um, and all of that. Uh, really helps to support me to be able to allow me to do more of this and to continue. So I thank all of you so much that that uh, uh, have participated in those, and um, yeah, I, I just I appreciate it so much as we're getting up to this the end of the year. I'm looking forward to some exciting things for next year. So with that, again, thanks so much for watching, and I wish you happy tangling.